something. I'm sorry. If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the filthy capitalist option. It's sorry, says. 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be part of the alliance. So you don't have to be part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times, and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com, and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon, and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is a community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. The alliances hang out on Discord. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash and sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and uh, it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 here and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. Buy our merch indeed, it shall so lead them. Okay, here we are. Uh, we speaking are. of children. <laughs> Love them. You got children that are not children, but act like they're children. You know I'm talking to you. If you think I'm talking to you, I'm talking to you. It's a lying ass. Uh-oh. What, 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 what did he say? What did he say to Ben Shapiro? How dare you? How dare you? <laughs> I say, how dare you? How dare you? <laughs> what he said, I say. <laughs> how dare you? Okay, next on the list here is Mare Cognil... Babe, can you just read this? It looks like Mare Cognitum. And just read the ending there. Entropic hallucinations. Yep. There we go. Okay. That's and what that's all about. This is DJed by the full English breakfast. Keep going. All right. Read, okay, read is, dear listener. This is a one-man black metal project from Portland, Oregon, who plays complex, majestic, and atmospheric black metal, which has a cosmic focus. This is taken from the 2014 album uh, Phobos. Phobos. we just read this, babe. Phobos Monolith. Void Hanger Records. On Void. See, <laughs> see, that's the other thing about uh, English Breakfast. She's a metal historian. I know. Like, yep. and Elijah Maxwell says, Mare is incredible. Okay. Mare is incredible. Indeed. Indeed. Okay, guys. Uh, let's check it out now. This is Mare. What did we say it was? Mare. Oh, I'm sorry. It's right here. Cognitum. Yeah, Cognitum. Mari Kondina in Anthropic Hallucinations. Let's go. Here we go. Chaos. Oh, I like that picture. Got some atmosphere. First it was just noise. Now we got some atmosphere.
<clears throat> that, I like the intensity of it. Yeah, my problem is it's programmed drumming. It's not a real drummer. So it's oh like there's God, a right. there's a big debate because some people help Drake with his writing and it's yeah. like is Drake really a rapper if yeah. people help him write his rhymes? Mm -hmm. I don't know because like for example like you know for the practice clips that we play like it's just Peter transposing a lot of the uh uh you know the info. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. <clears throat> You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I have a hard time, like, giving him, giving, giving props for that. Like, yeah, it's on point, but. But it's programmed, yeah. Right. Whoops. Yeah. Like, I, I do think, like, you Ooh. still have to, uh, like, you hear stuff in your head. Like, especially, like, when you play, you know, I just did, like, that that freestyle thing that I had come up with at 10 minutes that I put up on Instagram or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um you hear stuff in your head like you, you you're you know it goes with the beat yeah so you still have to create the the platform for the the drums to work around and you still have to have the idea so you can't say it's all machine mm -hmm. because you can give anybody a like you give me a machine i'm not going to come up with something like that you see what i'm saying <laughs> so you still have to give them their props for it. It's just, it's just kind of for me. It's like, ah, I don't know, man. Like, because mm -hmm. if I saw a Homo Sapien doing that shit live, I would lose my mind. Like that drumming, and there, I believe yeah, there are drummers that can. I forgot that it was programmed. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, so I don't know. Like, I can't give it. Like, I can't be like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? No, I'm not no, sure. No, I agree. I do think that you have to kind of add in that it's the one person doing all of it. So which she a did, of course, of Tina's always going to be stand up you know with shit but yeah go ahead. there there's going to be a certain level of like you you did it all yourself and you didn't have anybody to work with or to bounce ideas off like it was you you know so that's pretty cool um but at the same time um i, I for me th the vocals like i couldn't really hear them and I know that, like, this style of music, you don't generally hear it. But, like, right. the other ones I was able to hear. I couldn't even follow any yeah, of you had to You had to follow really, really, really close. And, like, the jump-off point, definitely to Tina's point, it was a bit, it was a bit different from, from the, the previous song. The jump-off point, if you could get it, the cadence to the mm -hmm. song. and what he, See, that's the thing. It's, like, everything else I thought was, like, on point. Like, lyrics, the lyrics are not machine-generated the the um the cadence that he used the rhythm isn't machine generated mm -hmm. it's i would say it's machine translated mm -hmm. he has a sound in his head he's got a sound of what he wants to hear and so he translates that onto the machine mm -hmm. and i guess at some level you could say that just like you have to master an instrument it probably takes the same amount of time to master the machine as an instrument in itself oh i'm sure yeah and i'll say okay i'll give you that but it's still not the same as doing the drumming to me, like from a human being. Oh, I, I totally agree. I totally agree. And I think there are also certain limitations to what human beings can do that force a certain kind of creativity. Mm -hmm. So like if you, you're running a crazy, you know, blast beat for eight minutes, which they weren't, but you see what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. it's humanly impossible. Mm -hmm. So because of that, you have to slow down and do other things yeah. to give yourself rest mm -hmm. to get back into it, which, you know, I think actually has creative power for an art like it, it it makes things a lot more variegated oh for sure for so sure. so i'll give him i'll give him that like it's really interesting because i'm really torn about this but i but i think i i still think you have to give him credit like there's a guy that we listened to like sub something i forgot what it was sub zero no no no, no. it was it's <laughs> sub something but anyway it's the guy's also a one-man band mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying but he's I think the is that advantage the sublime something like that sub No, it's not sublime. It's it's sub something. But anyway, the the advantage I think that he has is that because the vocals are so clear. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because the vocals are so clear and legible, then you you end up not having to invest so much in the music and you can look at what he's saying and all the rest of it and it's kind of like 50-50. Whereas this one because the, the lyrics are so indecipherable, then you lean back on the music mm -hmm. to, to carry you, which it does. Mm -hmm. But then when you're grading it, it's like, well, yeah, right. but you had a machine. But go ahead, go ahead. What were you thinking? Yeah. Ah, jeez. 
It's a tough one because I agree with you. Like, I mean, if it's a machine doing it, it's not actually people and you can just program it. I don't know how difficult that is to do. Um, ah, yeah, that kind of, that kind of throws me off a little bit because I liked the way that it was aggressive, but I agree if, if it's not done physically and it's something that you program in, it doesn't have the same feel to it. Um, and like I said, I, I was not a fan of like, I guess the way that I feel like what you just said kind of is that if everything's going to kind of be programmed and it's going to go that way, like put your vocal style in there real good because that's the one thing that you have that's actually coming from a person is all the stuff programmed or yeah, does he I, play I some instruments? I don't know. I'm sure he plays a guitar. He had to have. I don't know though, because that's a certain kind of genre within black metal. So... I, I think, and obviously this guy's got a fan base, so what I think, he's not doing the songs for us. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he's not doing the songs to be graded by us. He's doing the song for him and his, his his own fans, and I'm sure they know how to catch the cadence and figure out what he's saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean? So I'm not sure that he'd have to do that. <coughs> Lyrically, though, it's interesting. He says, uh, bear witness to the, rise, bear witness to the actual chaos echoing within your once sacred halls. Heat embracing an endless horizon Light, a curse in ailing landscapes, not unlike a bleeding wound, a festered scab, rot with disease. Ew. Sky agape, miasmic windows whispered through obscure dimensions, a landscape withering the clutch of an arthritic pale grass, tremorous hands grasping for once held brilliant sons of endless lust. See, I was saying this is a very, he's taking a scenic route to describe what to me is like a black hole event, you know, like mm -hmm. a supernova. Mm -hmm. You know, when these stars collapse in each other, create mm -hmm. this giant vacuum. It looks like that's what he's talking about. Carrying a, a blinding plague to unleash upon barren earth, futility and endless struggle driven by unconscious reason. That right there. Oh, right here. An incredible weight such as this is a planet drifting into empty space. Devoid of kingling and ash, the plague is never born. Yeah, that's that's a, that's a, it looks like a supernova and then you're getting sucked into a black hole. Scroll up for a second though. That line is insane. Futility and endless struggle driven by unconscious reason, which to me is when I hear, and I'm not picking on atheists, I promise, but when I hear people, you know, when I, when I say, okay, explain this to me, and they go, well, yeah, you're like, for example, we're talking about Chaga and how Chaga has to reprogram itself because it's an actual parasite from the birch tree, mm -hmm. and so the birch tree is fighting it, and then the Chaga has to reprogram itself to adapt to what it's fighting mm -hmm. and that's where you get the term adaptogen from and it's completely rational mm -hmm. it makes so much sense mm -hmm. and it's like nobody programmed that though nobody programmed that system that just happens just but but they say things like randomly which mm -hmm. that's impossible that's not randomness that's logic right right i don't want you to to eat me up you're a parasite i want to fight you well, yeah, I know you want to fight me, and so now you're putting this thing out there to destroy me, but the thing is I want to live, so I'm going to adapt to that mm -hmm. so that I can continue to live off you, but then I'm going to adapt to your adaptation. That's not random. Right. That's reason. Right. That's logic. That's mm -hmm. rationality. That is a system. And so you have to at best call it unconscious reason because at this point saying it's random or whatever – Makes absolutely no sense. <laughs> That's so interesting. I didn't even pick up on that. Driven problem, by unconscious reason. The problem is that the only beings that can reason are conscious beings. Mm -hmm. So you're still left with a with an irreconcilable contradiction. Mm -hmm. I just thought, I'm not complaining. I just think it's brilliant. <laughs> I'm not complaining. Mm -hmm. It's brilliant. It's a brilliant way of describing the universe that these people claim they live in. Mm -hmm. No. No. <laughs> No. The Chaga yeah. and the Birch thing make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Your cell systems make a lot of sense. And I understand now you're seeing some reason behind it, but it's not unconscious, my brother. Keep going. Yeah, I mean, we couldn't have science. We couldn't have the study of any of the, you know, the, the studies that we've done of the human body. We couldn't have that stuff if there wasn't order to it. Yeah, if you if you assumed randomness and the scientific endeavor itself... There'd be no motivation for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. It's the assumption of order, right? <laughs> and and the and the confinement to logic mm -hmm. and reason. Mm -hmm. See, the scientific method demonstrates that we believe that the universe is confined to to reason mm -hmm. and logic. 
Well, you can't have that if your base premise is true. Mm -hmm. So it's almost a self-stultifying thing. An incredible way to... So I think he's he's talking about a supernova and then the commensurate black hole that follows and all the rest of it. And he's describing it in amazing... Not just detail, but just... He's painting a picture for you that's pretty ridiculous. Mm. And I probably would have paid more attention in... Uh, uh, <laughs> Seventh grade Southwest Junior High School in uh, Melbourne, Florida, I think. You probably our, would have uh, paid more attention. Our science teacher, I forgot what his name was. It was something Buckner, I think, because he would always tell us that he was related to Bill Buckner. He's this guy in the Boston Red Sox, and I guess, you know, th there was a routine ground ball, and he missed it, and they cost him the world championship or whatever. And so he would always give us that little lecture. He was such a nice guy. He always smiled. But because he was so nice and we were seventh graders, we just ignored him and disrespected him. And one day he was like, ah! like it wasn't even English what he was saying. Seriously? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he he's like, it. he's like, you know what we're going to do for the rest of the class? And I was like, shit. <laughs> Remember that Denise girl I was telling you about? Denise Peralta. Shout out to Denise Peralta. Thank you so much for rejecting me and going for Scott, the uh, the, the Dallas Cowboys fan, because you, <laughs> dear Denise, <laughs> no. Uh, but anyway, shout out to Denise. She gets a, she gets one of those. <laughs> and so I was I was talking to Shorty, and he was like, oh, he's like, you know what we're gonna do for the rest of the class? And I was like, I was like, damn, bro. I was like, this guy. He's like, open your books to page whatever. And uh, it was on, you know, Supernovas, whatever it was. He's like, I tried to talk to you about it, but nobody feels like this is interesting. So what we're going to do for the next 28 minutes is we're going to just write and everybody's going to be quiet. And if you're not quiet, it's an ISS immediately. And ISS Aww. is an in-school suspension. Like, he lost Aww. it, bro. He lost it. So all of us were like, shit, man, this fucking guy, he's, he's, he's probably going to kill us all, bro. You better shut the fuck up and just write this shit, boy. We didn't feel sorry for him. I do. Because when we got out of class, we like, yo, trying. what's wrong with Mr. B, bro? He's losing his mind, bro. And uh, shout out to my buddy, Jace. Jace was on the baseball team with us. Jace was like, yeah, this, his girl was probably, you know. <laughs> he was talking all tough. He was talking all tough, but none of us wanted any smoke with Mr. B. So we all just sat there. It was the yeah. quietest, quietest I've ever seen in a room for that period of time in my life. Not just school, in my life. I do, I feel bad for him. I'd never, I, yeah. but Because he was trying to make it interesting for you guys? Yeah, I, I don't really, to, I'm not going to lie, I don't really remember him teaching it. I just never listened to him. I never listened to the homie. Not once, except for that time. I listened to him then. Okay. His eyes got really crazy. He gets very, very angry. He's very, very disturbed. He's very disturbed. <laughs> no, he was. He was truly disturbed. He was really upset. I believe it. Shout out to him. I'm very sorry, bro. If you're still alive, my bad. Um... Yeah, but if I would have had this like lyrically, like I would have been, uh, I would have been, I'd have been a lot more engaged. You know what I'm saying? I'd have been a lot more engaged. But you made it so boring, bro. I'm sorry. This this is like poetry, man. Yeah. Oh God. I don't know. You that, would be such a great teacher. But see, that's the thing about the Bible. When God, you know, Genesis one again is another poetry. Like, like you know, look. I know, yeah. It's, it's not this. It's, it's not true. this. What you know, like Arn Rye asked me, he's like, how come he didn't tell us about the scientific method? <laughs> yeah, in the beginning, there was a scientific. Come on, man. There's bigger issues at Ain't hand. Ain't nobody trying to hear that, bro. We're trying to hear stuff like this, man. Sorry, that's how I am. I'm sorry. Uh, this song gets a eight dot eight for me. It was a seven point eight for me. Uh, shout out to Stephen A. I mean, this man, you, you should have been gone a long time ago, my brother. Thank you for sticking with us, so we love you. What did you say it was? Uh, you give I it? think I give it a 7.9. 7.9. There you are, dear listener. Another one in the books. Vin out. Sorry out. Gone. I'm Vin. I'm sorry. If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the Filthy Capitalist option. It's sorry says... 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. You don't have to be part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times, and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com, and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon, and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs>
get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is a community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. The alliances hang out on Discord. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Vin and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and uh, it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 here and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. Buy our merch indeed, ladies and gentlemen. Link is down below. <laughs> um, we are on the last song mm, of our the our full English breakfast stream. This song is Autumn Nostalgia. Eternal joy on the mountain of loneliness. It it's, actually sounds like, you know that book, um, Heinz Feet on High Places? Huh? You don't remember that book, Heinz Feet on High Places? Well, I actually think I do remember, actually. You usually say yes when I bring it up. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, actually, eternal joy on the mountain of loneliness. The kids, I read it to them, I think, twice. It's an allegory, right? That's is, That's that allegorical book about uh, little, uh, little Faith, what's her afraid. name? Much afraid, and then what did her name get changed to? Did she have a couple name changes? No. She, she had, started. She started off as much afraid, and then she ended it as what? I like, can't remember. I just know that sorrow and suffering were her friends. Yeah, and then she had a brother named Craven or some shit like that. That was a cousin. Right? His name was Craven Fear. Yeah, Craven Fear. Yeah, 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 yeah. Probably uh, gonna do another reread with the kids on that. They love that one. Really? Uh huh. I think Dorian would love it even more now. He, he's become cornier and cornier as, as the years have gone by. <laughs> Honey, he, he, he's always been like that. <laughs> I think he just didn't have the like space to express it. <laughs> I, no, he's always had the, the, the... What are you talking about? No, he's always had the, the space, space to express it. The space to express it in the sense that you're not like traditional and all no, of that. No, I said he's and become is his bio yeah. I said he's become cornier. Yeah, I don't think so. I think he always had it. He just wasn't able to really... Because you're not a traditionist, and she was not like that. That has nothing to do with, with so I that think, book. So I feel like he's able to express it more because I'm around, honestly. I don't think yeah, he's Yeah, that works more. for holidays. That doesn't work for that book. The book is like a one-off, right? It's not a holiday, a holiday, a holiday tradition. You get the idea. You're not going to sit down and read the book to him, and neither would she. Again, that has nothing to do with tradition, though. Oh, my God. Do you understand what I'm trying to communicate? Let's go into the song. Lord, help us. <laughs> help me, Lord. Eternal joy in the mountains and loneliness. Let's go. <laughs> this I like. You knew I would like this. That's why you ended the song on this one, you smart person, you. My comments. There we go.
there may be more than two camps, though. Shady. Okay. Um, that was really pretty. That was beautiful. I love that. And uh, Tina Benina knows me. The... So she knows that I was going to love this song yeah. because of the beauty of the tremolo bar. The tremolo picking. I like the lyrics, too. Yeah, I the lyrics. waited so long that a mountain has grown beneath me. It elevated me into the sky near the stars. Like, that. The lyricist, this, there isn't one single song tonight. And this song, th this night has been very lyric heavy, by the way. Mm -hmm. Very lyric heavy. But there hasn't been one guy who I haven't said, damn. That's Soraya drinking her half gallon of water, taking all day to drink a half Stop, gallon of water. Stop, babe. I already drank one half gallon. I'm drank, on my second half gallon. I drank gallon. three in like six minutes a couple of nights Rude. ago. I was going to the bathroom every two seconds, so literally, it's terrible. Uh, I don't suggest doing it that way. Do it, do it, spread it out to the. Also, to the there'll be a vaccination at the end of the stream, so prepare yourselves. <laughs> Go ahead. No, you were talking about how Tina picked all the, <laughs> picked all the. Uh... Yeah, lyrically, they they've all been monsters. These people, every single one of them, have been monsters. Uh, lyrically speaking. <laughs> Here the uh, the sky opens up just for me. The starry darkness shines here just for me. I am by myself and my joy is endless. That's how I look down on everything. Everything that I left underneath me forever. All that I have found up here is different. It surpasses everything I've anticipated. I've left everything else behind. I will stay in my solitude forever. Oof. I am by myself in the endlessness of my joy. Babe. Yeah, see, I don't know if this guy killed himself, though. Because it says, I've waited so long that a mountain has grown beneath me and he gets elevated up into the sky near the stars. I just thought it was poetically talking about the how The sky opens up just everybody. for me. The starry darkness shines here just for me. I'm by myself. My joy is endless. That's how I look down on everything. Everything that I left underneath me forever. I just thought it was like a lofty way of being like, I'm above all of everything. I didn't think that the guy had. Uh, ended well, he's life. not taking a I'm above everybody thing. I, I don't think. No, he left everything beneath him. He left everybody beneath him. Yeah, that's because that's, that's, be that's, how, that's how you are. But I don't think that that's. What do you mean that's how I am? I mean, you're kind of. You kind of. You know what I'm saying? Rude. No, it's not. I'm just saying like. Our interpretations tell us about ourselves, right? Just like we talked about earlier with the nature no, thing. No, I, I, I've when you never heard guts, been in I that place. Guts, however, I, I heard would... guts. I was thinking the Bronx. You heard guts. You're thinking roadkill. That's all. Yeah, I would. I I would like the idea of that. Of what? I've never been in a place where I could be above everything and by myself and be completely happy. <laughs> That's part of my issue. No, but yeah, I. I yeah, I, 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 I'm just you're saying, saying in a pride my, sense, maybe. Is well, that that's saying? that's how you're interpreting. You're no. saying that he's above everybody and everybody's beneath no, okay, him. No, okay, honestly, did this kind babe, of gesture. I, it's a I, very I, humble gesture. <laughs> I motioned to you at the beginning of the song because I was thinking, is this how you feel? You know, like you like to get away and have like your hours by yourself. Yeah, that's what it made me think of. But but yeah, but again, you yeah yeah yeah. I mean, rewatch the video. But I'm saying for me, it looks like. This is a very poetic way of saying that he killed himself because he was so lonely. Because he says, everything that I left underneath me forever. And then it says, all that I have found up here is different. It surpasses everything I anticipated. I've left everything else behind. I will stay in my solitude forever. Oh God. So it doesn't sound like he's a guy who feels like he's above everybody or whatever. The above to me is just talking about going to a different world because he was so lonely and it it's a it makes a very interesting but he's happy his joy is endless there that well, seemed to me somebody that's that's what people think right they think that they're going to a better place when they leave this world so that would make sense I, i'm just saying that's my premise of the song obviously i mean it's art you're going to interpret it differently it's and i want to hear your your i'm just i'm just taking i'm just telling you what my interpretation is um, well, i mean i think that yours is probably right I am by myself in the endlessness of my joy. That's how I look down at everything I left underneath me forever. 
So it just looks to me like this is a very poetic, almost defensive way of saying that he was so lonely that he uh, took his own life or that he feels like taking in his own life and that he wants to experience some sort of joy or happiness. And so instead of saying I'm endlessly lonely, he's saying that he's endlessly joyous at the top of this. And again, it's at the top of a mountain, which is really interesting because I was talking about this universal history guy, Jonathan, whatever. And he talks, he's the only per I've never heard aside from Michael Heiser. He talks about Eden being a mountain, which it was, mm -hmm. it was a garden mountain. And so when they got cast out, they were, they actually got cast down because the Hebrew actually says that they were driven out of the garden. And so the, since the garden was on top of a mountain, they were cast down. So it's a, a descent. So the, in, the, in the human mind, to, to, to the gods lived on the mountains. Right. And so in the ancient Near East, they were all on the mountain. Mm -hmm. And then in you know, Greek mythology, they lived on Mount Olympus because you know you, everybody's trying to get back to that original state. Mm -hmm. And so... What's it called? It, the, it, the eternal joy on the mountain of loneliness. So that's a, that it, so again, there's a universal concept that we all have this universal understanding in the collective consciousness or whatever. I'm just at the beginnings of it. It sounds like a dedication to what was within. He left worldly things behind oh. like a disciple. Um, so, and this was also what um, we we're supposed to read. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Okay, so the band is from Slava Slovakia. Oh, Where, babe? Where Slovakia? More specifically, you know, like Czechoslovakia, are part of the Hungarian minority minority who live there. This is just beautiful, and I hope a great end to a fun evening. One hundred percent. This is from the twenty twenty album. Read this, babe. S a s percipi. Yeah. That sounds like uh, s e s percipi. That sounds like uh, Latin. Steven or, or Perkinos probably knows it. Yeah, I guess. God, that's. Well, I, I kind of liked the song at first when it was when it felt like it was. Did kind you hear of about... Tina's, Tina's interpretation? It sounds like a dedication to what was within. He left worldly things behind like a disciple. Hmm. That's metaphorical for a higher place. So, you know, there are people that uh, <laughs> Jesus was talking about marriage. Mm -hmm. Matthew 19. Mm hmm. And the disciples were like, well, shit, if it's this bad, we might as well not marry. And Jesus said, well, there are people who are, who are eunuchs, unmarriageable people for the kingdom. Um, and then he said, you know, so he said something like, let him who can receive it, receive it or something, mm -hmm. something like that. Um, which is the, the basis for the Roman Catholic priesthood being the celibacy, the, the mm -hmm. celibacy of the Roman Catholic priesthood. I'm not certain that you can take that passage and institutionalize it. No. But I do think in Protestantism, that verse means nothing. Mm -hmm. You've never even heard a sermon. You'll never hear a mm -hmm. sermon like that, in, about that in Protestantism. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm going to write a book one day, like the top 10 sermons you'll never hear in a Protestant church. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That's From crazy. now on, all, all, all people will call me blessed. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I refer to Mary as a blessed mother, you and your mother, you guys are always, <laughs> you guys have a serious problem. I do not have a problem mother. with that anymore. Yeah. I used to. I suck for a lot. The last review we did, we did, we had like an eleven minute segment where you were you were you were bashing the blessed mother, calling her a regular. I was not calling bashing her, calling her. her a regular woman. I was not bashing her. How wow. dare you? How dare you? But that's an interesting take from Tina's point. Okay, so that Katie, you then, were there. You heard it. But see, again, again, this is why this is why like you shouldn't be so whatever because your interpretation says a lot about you, uh, and not necessarily the artist per se. So you're interpreting that way. I'm interpreting that way, and, and then Tina's interpreting that way. That's but but it's really interesting because a lot of especially with evangelicals, man. Living a life like that where you throw relationships behind. When I say relationships, I'm specifically talking about like these kinds of relationships. It's, almost, it's like death sentence. Like it, it's something to be completely avoided like the plague. It's mm -hmm. not something to be – it's definitely not something to be celebrated. And a lot of times when it's taught – and I, I've done this. It's like, well, while you're waiting – you know, they'll do like a two second thing where they're like, well, there's some people who yeah. never get married, but that's not really how it usually is. And then they'll boom. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, 
No, that's in there. Mm-hmm. And and that and it's interesting because Jesus ends it by basically saying, hey, if you can receive it, do it. Which is really interesting because it'd be like, you have that inclination, you have that gift or that circumstance. But it's almost like he knows because of the culture how hard that is to actually ex- accept. Yeah. Because it's one thing to be like 30, 40, 50 and single, but still looking forward to maybe I'll have a mate, maybe I'll have a yeah. mate versus saying, right. I will never have a mate mm-hmm. purposely for devotion to God. Mm-hmm. I think in Hinduism, it's called uh, sannyas. Mm-hmm. Really? Um, yeah. Uh, what's the big homie was explaining to me. I'm not really a fan of that methodology, though, because... There are people who like leave their com- their families completely behind. Yeah, I, yes. Perfect. Although I, I don't think, biblically speaking, you can completely say that that's wrong, because Jesus talked about leaving homes and children and whatever for the sake of the kingdom. I mean, I would never do it because I don't love Jesus like that. Well, yeah, but it also says that if you don't take care of your family, then yeah, you don't. If you don't provide, you're worse than unbelievers. So right. the, the church would give you a stipend. Your church would take care of your family, and you would go out and, and push forward the kingdom. Yeah. I, and I think that there's space for that. I just think that the people that I, the person that I know that did that, yeah, that guy's they, cr- that, 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 <laughs> they didn't support that, their family. That guy, yeah, yeah, that, that's a different guy. But my point is, my point is, I don't love Jesus like that. I don't. I couldn't do that well, to you. Just you say it right out, huh? Well, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, he knows I don't love him like that. Not at this point in my life, anyway. But I couldn't do that to you. I couldn't do that to Dorian. I couldn't do that. I. I you, no, I couldn't do it to you guys. Because I don't love him like that. I, could, I would lay down my life for him. But I, I, but I couldn't live knowing that you guys were... Living without you. Yeah. But I could, I could lay down my life for the gospel. I could lay down my life for my enemies. But I couldn't, I couldn't do that. And I couldn't lay down your life or, or Dorian's no, life no. for my enemies. Mm. Like, they're going to die. If it was me, fine. But you guys, they're going to die. That's where I'm at. Like that, the love of my love for Christ is not there, and so, so like it's really interesting because he's alone, but he's experiencing joy, and I do believe that people that embrace that have a they obviously have a rock in a relationship with Christ that people like us will never understand, ever, because Christ lived that way. Mm-hmm. See what I'm saying? And so, and, and my the, my second most important person in all human history, the Apostle Paul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, um, lived that way. Mm-hmm. And so, they it's just like, when I was in a really bad marriage, like, me and you fight, we're not in a bad marriage at all. Like, you haven't, you haven't sent me into my prayer closet for three hours a day. And there were many years in which I'd, I'd have to be in the prayer closet for three hours a day to fucking withstand that broad. So, like, so well, I'm not saying that a married person cannot relate to Christ, too, because I've had, but the fellowship with Christ was really, really sweet in that period of time. And I got amazing revelations during that period. Like, for example, I was in my closet and I was crying. Nobody's going through what I'm going through. And nobody locally was going through what I was going through. And and, and even though I despise her in my heart right now, I'll never say publicly all the shit that I went through with this woman just because I, I wouldn't do that to her. I still despise the fuck out of you, though. But I've never, I could never do that to her. Mm-hmm. But, like... I remember a specific time I was in my closet, man. I was crying. Oh, there's nobody, you know. And I, and I, and I, and then like I had this mantra over and over. I said, "Jesus, she's killing me. She's killing me. She's killing me." And he said to me, "I understand." And it wasn't like a there, there. I saw the Roman soldier putting the spear through Jesus' side, and that same guy that later said he said he glorified God and said, "Truly, this man was the son of God." And uh, he said, my girl killed me too. <laughs> so I understand. And I was like, damn, bro. So I, you know, when talking about loving your wife as Christ loved the church, I had a revelation of my relationship with God in a way that a person who took sannyas could never understand and in a way that a person with a perfect marriage could never understand. Mm-hmm. Jesus has had to suffer 
<laughs> with and for his and it gave me spiritual power to continue because I don't know any human being that would have been able to tolerate being around that woman. And I now, now after being with you, I wouldn't be able to tolerate a week with her. That's my, my, my tolerance to her has been like destroyed being around you. It's like, you know, not where, you know, like where we're on three minutes for planks now, like miss, miss planks for a couple days. <laughs> miss planks. Game. It's like that. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like, I've had like crazy revelations with, with, with God and with Christ, specifically Christ, you know, working Make with this, being with the, the other one was, um, I was, I was praying again, and you know that that passage is Hebrews four that he's uh, he's he was made he was made like us in all things without except for sin, so that he could be a merciful merciful and faithful high priest. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it develops into chapter 7 and says, therefore, he's able to intercede uh, uh, for us because he, therefore, he's able to save to the uttermost because he always intercedes to God for us. That's what it is. Um, and so it's always like, look, Jesus came down here so that you could know, so he could know what you were going through. And obviously, Hebrews 4, that's what the text says. So I'm sitting there praying, praying, praying. And I'm in my closet again, and I'm in the garden of Gethsemane with Jesus. And I'm, he's there, and, and I'm like five feet away, and he's in the dirt block, playing, crying, blood, whatever, whatever. But then he was also standing next to me. <laughs> and uh, this is not like some vision or whatever. It's, it's so hard to explain. Uh, it wasn't like I was like whatever. But I'm, I'm, so I was there, and because and, uh, and, I was, oh, I'm suffering, blah, blah, blah. And, and he, I was outside of the gate of the garden. So there's Jesus in the garden, right? I'm five feet away, and then the Jesus is beside me, but there's this gate. And he opened the gate, and he said, can you come in here with me? And it wasn't like a, it wasn't like a, come on, bro, come with me. Come suffer with me. It was almost like a challenge. It was a challenge, but it was a loving challenge. It's very hard to explain. I can't, I'm do, doing no justice. I'm very, very sorry. But he said, can you come in here with me? And then boom, oh, the Philippians 4, Paul says, I want to know Christ in the fellowship in his suffering. And then it hit me, boom. Jesus came here and yeah, he can relate to you in, in, in suffering, but he far superseded you in suffering, bro. So now you're suffering. You don't just comfort yourself with Hebrews 4. Oh, Jesus knows how I feel. You comfort yourself with Philippians 4. You know how Jesus felt. And that is a different type of fellowship. Mm -hmm. that, that was a mind so blow. That gave yeah. that gave me five years with her. I ate that wow. for five years. Like I can tell you the amount of years those moments and those scriptures fed me to to, to handle being with that individual. <laughs> Okay, and and I'm not. I, by the way, I mean you got. I mean I don't need to say this. I'm I'm just saying this for the visitors who don't know me. I'm a very difficult person to live with as well. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but this lady with this shit was supernatural. But anyway, like, so it was crazy. Like this song, "The Eternal Joy in the Mountain of Loneliness." Like I was so alone in that marriage, and I was so alone in those Bible studies. Like I'd hear the guys complain. Like the guys would complain about the shit me and you fight about. You know what I'm saying? Like they would complain about, it, and I would just be like, I'd be so angry at them. I'm like, you mother. I'm like, I wish I could complain about dumb shit like that, bro. I wish I could complain about dumb shit like that. Um, but yeah, man, like it's weird. Like so, I was I was alone. Like the only time like I get ever got a respite from being alone was like when me and you would talk. Like when you would talk to me about God, or when you like, I would just see you talk about God, and you'd be so passionate. Like it did something for me. Like. It was very, very hard to explain. But aside from you, it was the only time I wasn't alone ever. And then when I was off with my boys, but we were doing bad shit. I mean, now I look back, I'm like, okay, we're doing bad shit <laughs> in the world. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But like, yeah. It, it, so, but, but it was weird. Like, there, are, I wouldn't trade those moments with Jesus for anything. Mm -hmm. I hated going through them with her. And I, I cannot stand her, but it, 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 
I had I had a pastor who said those who God will use uh, greatly, He wounds deeply, and that held me up for like fifteen minutes. Like those like, those little cool Christian phrases, they 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 help. It was like a little shot, but it wasn't like the inoculation, you know. But yeah. it it was like there's a certain kind of joy, and it's not masochistic. Ooh, I enjoy pain, but it's more like. Man, there's there's no one here. He's eliminated everyone from this place in my soul. So only me and him are occupying this space. And I'm completely present and conscious in that moment for five years. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And like Crazy. externally, the temple was being completely destroyed. But internally, like you start to figure out what the fuck Paul's talking about when he says sorrowful but always rejoicing. Mm -hmm. When he says that our outer man is wasting away, but our inner man is being renewed day by day. Like, you start to figure out, oh, that's what that that's means. What I mean. Like, you can read all the commentaries in the world, bro. But until you're in that shit, you don't know it. But then when you read it, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's what that was. Mm. Like, you don't need an interpreter. You don't need a pastor to tell you. Mm -hmm. You don't need a theologian. You don't need to translate the Greek and Hebrew and the Aramaic. You don't need the Septuagint, man. You know what he's talking about. You know what I'm saying? And th yeah. so there's a certain joy in that to even now, I feel remnants of that pain and that joy at the same time wow. right now. Like I go back those places. Wow. Um, and it's so weird. I wouldn't trade it for the world, but I'd never go back there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a, that's a, I just, I'm never going to act like I'm super Christian. Like I'm not going to say, I'm so glad. Like I wouldn't trade it for the world, but I would never go back there to get there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I, 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 um so yeah that's really the tina's take on it really just like made me go Arr! yeah and it, it took it to a completely different dire di direction for me hmm. but uh shout out to jesus man like you carried me through that bro <laughs> if it wasn't for you whoo -hoo. he he carried you know that 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 uh that thing with his footsteps and the beat low i'm telling you bro like he completely <laughs> carried me through that time it's so crazy to me bro. when you were it in really the middle is. of it did you feel like you were being carried or does it or now you're like no yo, i was totally being carried oh my gosh uh, I probably wouldn't have characterized it that way. I'd have been like, I, 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 at the time, like in my journals and stuff, I'd be like, yo, I just stepped through the gate. I'm stepping through the gate today, man. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, you know, like you had to, you had to wake up and like prime yourself to deal with this person. Like, so when you go, oh, we're, no, we're fighting into something. I'm like, <laughs> I don't wake up and prime. I, I, like, I wake up and like, what we're going to do. We got our list of, you know, we got to accomplish. We got to get this trademark. I got to hit the lawyer. I got to put some pressure. I got to squeeze the lawyer. I got to put pressure on him to, to move, you know. Um, but, yeah, I didn't feel like I was being carried because that wasn't the metaphor he gave me. That was a metaphor he gave her, whoever first came up with that. You know what I'm saying? Now, looking back, the metaphor he gave me was walk through the gate. You see what I'm saying? Um, and, uh, wow. you know, there's some stuff I'll keep for the rest of my life between me and him. Like, mm -hmm. that's never going to get, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and I would, I would, beautiful. Thanks for sharing I would that. cry for days mm -hmm. if somebody had to go through, if somebody had to feel what I had to feel to get to that point, I'd cry for days for them because I know how that feels. But I'd also, sorrowful but always rejoicing like I, some of you guys you guys tell me the shit you guys go through like it's mind-boggling it's a gut punch and you know we we've we've felt your guys' pain and 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 it's not there's no there's no fucking charity here guys because you guys did that earlier in the day for me right so there's no mm. but we felt your but but i also know like like there, there's somebody right now god's laid on my heart like he's going through the shit man mm. he's going through it hard mm. but i know god's got him like there's no like more real than you are right here. I know God's got him. And there's another guy. I hit I hit priest. I was like, yo, son, this this guy, <laughs> watch. And he's like, what? I'm like, bro, I'm telling you. But he's been through some shit. You see what I'm saying? He's been he's been he's been. Brother died, you know, OD all that shit. Like he's been he's he's been in the gate, man. Yeah. He just didn't know it. He did, he thought he was alone. You see what I'm saying? So. Yeah. So I'd hate I'd hate for my friends. Like I I become real close with a lot of these people here. Mm -hmm. And same with Tina. You know, like really weird. But holy shit, you you want to talk about pain like unspeakable? 
there's a lot of unspoken shit and a lot of really fucking lonely, horrible nights, man. Mm-hmm. And I feel that shit. And I, you know, the idea that she could like coagulate all that as a as a sacrifice to God and that God would reward her with like a a different kind of presence. Mm. Yeah. That nobody can relate to. Yeah. Is what keeps me going when I think about when I think about that. You know what I'm saying? Like. So yeah. Anyway, I'm done, man. I talk too much shit. No, that was really good. <clears throat> so there you go. What do you get the song? Uh, <laughs> you know, I, it's hard for me to rate the song because and separate it from what you just shared. Um, so. I think that all this was super important. I'm going to go with an 11 for this one. And it was beautiful. 11. Yeah, it's an 11. It's an, it's, it, it's, uh, it, it's obviously an 11 for me. Um, very, very unexpected. Um, but it's so crazy how one little line, because it was just one little line from Tina, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. can change the, the trajectory and the interpretation of everything. But she does it. She did that the Bible movies too. Every mm-hmm. single time we did a Bible boogie, Tina always had like this one thing that was like, Phew! yeah, that's but it was true. all like, holy yeah. shit, I never yeah. thought of that before. Like, and I'm like, okay, like, okay, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, shout out, shout out to Tina Medina. Um, very, 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 very good song, Dewey or Davy. We got to spend some time with our kids because it's one o'clock where we are. Um, but send me an email. Because you're not deploying tomorrow, are you? I don't think they would make him deploy the day before Thanksgiving. So uh, send me send me an email, um, Davey, and let's see if we can't coordinate tomorrow. Because I gotta spend some time with the kids. Mm-hmm. We gotta watch at least an episode of Tour La Brea with the kids. Um. Uh, so let's see if we can can't coordinate, even if it's like a private. You know, the three of us listen to the song together. Um. I definitely do want to come through for you. Um, but we got to come through for the kids as well. Uh, yeah, I purposely ignored that. Yeah, one. I know. I just wanted you to see it. <clears throat> Shout out to Greg Church. Greg Church says, "I thought I was at church." <laughs> <laughs> People are mad funny. And look at his last. His last name is Church. <laughs> you have a brother named Dan. <laughs> if you do, shout out to the homies. Shout out to all the stalkers who watch us incessantly. I appreciate you guys. <laughs> Uh, all right, guys. Uh, much love to everybody. Uh, Tina Stream, 100% quality as always. Absolutely, guys. Take care of each other, guys. Love your neighbor. Do something good for somebody. If you're uh, lonely through Thanksgiving, uh, we will pray for you. As a matter of fact, I don't care. I'm going to pray for you right now. Jesus, thank you for all our friends, God. You know Thanksgiving is a great time. Friends, family, and all that. And the pain that I'm feeling because I can't be with my family. Um God, I selfishly don't realize that I'm still surrounded by my family. There's a lot of people out there that are alone. Um, so I pray you take care of them, that you watch over them, that uh, you protect them from from bad thoughts. Mm-hmm. And uh, I pray that you would show us uh, what we can do in the next 48 hours to to give brightness to people on on a hard day for a lot of people uh and i pray that you would uh give us the strength to do it and follow through um you've been really really good to me bro really have thank you thank you for all my friends and thank you for for giving me for all my crazy event sessions tonight and all the rest of it um take care of that girl (laughs) take care of that girl all right I love you all. In Jesus' name, I love you all.